Hello, chalkers. My name's Christy. I am a chalk couture independent designer. And today I'm going to show you how to do how to use our permanent ink on metal containers and how to heat set them so they are permanent. So um, I've got I think I've said already I've got only three colors of the permanent ink so far. I've got the white, the black, the black velvet, I mean, the bright white, and I've got a shimmer gold as well. So um, today what I'm going to do, I've got these containers. I'm just going to flip this over so you can see. Um, so they hold utensils. Um, I've had these for quite a few years. Um, I'm not going to put these in the oven to heat set because there's a paint on them. And I'm not sure if that is a good idea to put in my oven where I put my food. So what I'm going to do instead is use the heat gun to set them and I'll show you that today. So right now what all three of them, all three of them say on them is utensils and I put all my big spoons, my wooden spoons, my spatulas um, and all that in them. The stuff I use on a regular basis when I'm cooking. So what I've decided to do is I'm going to try and actually pick up that color using my white and black. I'm going to mix a color together to get a really dark gray that looks nice on this cream color. And I'm going to flip them over and do it right on the back so that if I choose, I can still have all three of them say just utensils, but on the back, they'll have something different. So what I'm using right now, you can see here, this is a magic bag, um, or a, some people call them wheat warmer. So you heat these up in the microwave and you put them on like sore muscles, cramps, etc. cetera, right? Um, but I'm using that just to keep the round surface as you can see, the round surface still, so I don't have to hold it while I'm chalking. Now I've got, um, I'll show you these first. This one's called Welcome Trio, and I've had this since last year. They're kind of, they're kind of small, so I haven't really used them on a lot of different things. I've kind of used them in, um, in conjunction with a few other transfers, but I haven't used them just as the trio. So they say, hello, welcome, and gather. So the idea is that I'm going to put hello and then on the other one welcome and the other one gather. And you can see I have used them. They are stained. But again, the staining of the pigmented chalk is natural. It happens, but it doesn't affect your transfer. As you can see, the silk screen portion is open. So as long as that silk screen portion is open, they work fantastic. So I'm going to just start with the hello. I'm trying to make sure that it's on the exact opposite side so that I can position them as I want. So hello. Some of the adhesives already gone on this hello. But as long as I can keep it straight down, sticking, that part doesn't matter. It just needs to be adhered around the silk screen to ensure that it won't bleed. So actually before I do that, because it's pretty simple to put your transfers on, I'm just gonna pull that off actually. I'm just gonna move my wheat warmer, my magic bag out of the way, and I am going to create a color that looks similar to the gray that's already on these. And I'm not going to need a lot because it's not, it's not very much at all, the wordage. That you can see when I open up my containers, it's nice and shiny. The ink is really, really forgiving. When you open up the containers, they're always like this. I've never had an issue at all. I've never, you don't add water, it just is always the right consistency with the ink. So I'm gonna need a little bit of white. 
I'm actually hoping I'm not overshooting how much I need here. Because I'm not, after I mix this, I'm not going to be able to put it back into the container and I don't have an empty container to offload this into. That's our Chalkology ink in bright white. I'm just gonna put this white spatula over here and then I'm going to get some of the black. Now, to get that gray, I'm going, oh, I think I used too much white already actually. I'm just gonna actually take some of that white and put it back. So I feel like that might be too much and I really don't wanna waste my product. I'm just trying to get this gray color I can always add some more white, but I don't want to waste it. So I'm trying to get the gray color that's on the, the cream color. See, it's not quite, it's not a true black. It's just slightly under that. And I'm not gonna need a ton. For these few words. Oh, I just dropped my. Sp there we go. I'm actually gonna put a little bit more back in. I'm just looking at the transfer and thinking it doesn't look like it's. really big enough to need too much. So now I'm taking a clean spatula. And I could use a squeegee for this too, but I like the spatulas. I've already inked my surface, but that's all right. Before your ink is cured, you can wash that up. I don't even know if that's visible on camera. And I wiped that up now. Okay, so I'm going to just work the white into the black. Just trying to get that nice dark charcoal gray color that's on the utensils container. And you can purchase mixing plates from Chocature, but I do have these um, on hand already and I've been using them and they seem to work pretty well. It'd be nice if they were a little bit smaller just to keep the color concentrated to the one area but they're working pretty well. So you can see the colors mix nicely together. It actually mixes a lot nicer than or a lot faster not nicer than the paste because it's already got such a slippery consistency. Now, I think that might be enough. I'm hoping that's enough for my little project here. So I'm going to just move this over to the side here and put my magic bag back down. Close up my black ink. There we go. All right, so just putting this down, making sure that the word utensils is right on the back directly so that it's exact and I can flip it around and use it how I'd like. I'm just gonna put the hello down. I'm leaving about the same gap on the top and I'm just gonna grab a squeegee here yeah I may need to mix a bit more color I'm just gonna do that now because it's gonna be hard to get the exact same color unless I do it all in one batch I 
And I sure could have prepped this before I came on live, but I like the, I like the real time. I like to show each and every individual step. And I think I've actually added more weight this time. I really do want that dark gray. I kind of want it just to look like it was, it came like this. So if I make it the same color, I'm just gonna add a bit more black here. If I make it the same color, then I could, I could have like welcome and utensils showing at the same time and it would look cohesive. It was meant, it was meant to be there. I'm enjoying mixing up these inks too because they don't dry so you don't really have to you don't have to hurry with them at all, which I don't mind hurrying with the paste. It's not super difficult, but it's also nice to not have to worry about it. I could maybe even want darker. Okay, I'm just, I'm deciding whether or not I'm going to go darker, and I'm like, you know what, it's fine. I like this color of gray. This will look sharp. Alright, so I'm just going to go right over it. Simple as that. Hello. Oh, nice. And put that in my water bath beside me, upside down, so it starts soaking off that ink. So the next one here, utensils. Just actually, that looks like it's where'd that magic eraser go? My tools here, my keyboard in the way here. So I've got a magic eraser here and I'm just gonna clean this up. I actually did ink something else on here, but before I cured it, I wiped it off because I wanted to do something different instead. Just grab a paper towel here. Make sure it's nice and dry before I try and put my transfer on. Now that I've touched it so much, I'm just gonna make sure it's centered. Okay, there we go. Ooh. 
Ooh, I got a little bit of water on this transfer. There we go. Make sure it's nice and dry. So I'm not fuzzing these ones before I go because I've used them a couple times and they don't really need it. On these shiny surfaces, uh, on these shiny surfaces, uh, they tend to stick a lot stronger. And also on curved surfaces, you have to watch. This is actually um, this is a good curve the way that this one is, but when it starts going um, more more angle, sometimes it's hard to get the a straight transfer to grab properly because it does have to be flat in order for the transfer to be stuck on properly so it doesn't bleed through. That one looks great. So I'm just gonna pick up some of my gray I've made here. And across I go. There's some excess. Pull off that excess. Got a little bit on my fingers here. I'm just gonna get that off. I don't wanna I'm gonna put ink all over my surface. And I'm gonna pull that right off. Trying, I'm pulling up from the middle of it, and that just helps so that the transfer doesn't stretch at all. You can kind of see, actually, here how it's curving a little bit. So it's stretched a little bit. You, you don't want that. You want to try and pull it up so that it's not pulling and stretching, but this is perfectly fine. I've had ones that actually, like, curl all the way up, like, uh, to the thickness of a pencil, and those ones are really hard to get straight again. So it's a good idea to make sure you fuzz so you're not, so your adhesive isn't pulling so much when you're trying to take it back up, but still sticking enough that it works. So that looks great. So you can see side by side, make sure this is in camera here. Yeah, you can see side by side. That's not quite the exact same color, but it's awfully close. And they would look really cute together like that or in the hello welcome gather so utensils again just gonna flip it and I'm gonna put on the welcome so again I'm trying to make sure that the top is even around that you can see that um, indent there And flatten it out. And as it goes smaller towards the bottom, you can see it's right here, it's lifting a little bit because it's trying to, it's trying to stay flat over here, but at the bottom here, this is a lot smaller. So it does do this. This is why you have to, you have to make sure you're picking your transfer size as well. Um, because some of the bigger ones just won't work on a surface like this. Um, and when you get into smaller, um, like vases and stuff like that, if, if there's a, a large curve, it has a hard time sticking because it is a flat surface. Just something to keep in mind. As long as this is flat right here, and the top is flat, even if it's a little bit up here, there's no problem. That's still a good enough adhesion all the way through. So I'm just gonna go and get my welcome. Just go back over and I'm getting all this excess off that I can't even put back into a container. I did mix a little bit more than I actually needed to. Maybe I can find something I can use this gray up for before 
I'm done. Gotta have something else around, right? And now this one is not quite as sticky as the gather one was. I've used this more. And there we go. So now I have got that in the water bath there. I've got a hello. Welcome gather set. And I'm going to now I've got to get all my all my ink out of the way first. Just away from the surface here. All my little bits and pieces. don't want to dry. That right there hopefully it doesn't fall. And actually on this welcome here, because it has been used a few times and the adhesive is wearing out on it. It's a little bit on the outside. And you can fix this. It's a little bit easier to do once it's had um, 24 hours to cure dry. You can get a lot closer in here. But for the sake of the live video, Now, in case you're wondering what I am using right now, this is a bamboo skewer. And it just works nicely to get in between your designs. So much noise. I'm just gonna grab this Q tip here. Just tidy that up a little bit. Try to be really careful not to touch the wet ink. I'm pushing it towards the other ink. Okay. So now, and I'm gonna get this out of the way too. What I am going to use right now is it's a Black and Decker heat gun. I purchased this years ago to fix a um, window, an old window. So the idea was the heat gun warmed up the. Oh, what do they even call it? Putty, I believe. Warmed it up enough that you could pull it out and not ruin the the windowsill when you're taking out all the old pieces that are falling apart and trying to redo an old window, an old wooden window. Worked really, really great for that, actually. I successfully fixed the window quite well. It was actually a rental. <laughs> Okay, so I'm going to plug this in. Now, if you've never seen a heat gun used before, actually, I'm holding this. So it's just going towards us. If you've never seen a heat gun used before, it's essentially a hair dryer 
but it's super heavy duty, really, really hot. You do not want to put this on your skin or hair. Um, but it's really easy to use. So I'm going to just turn it on and I'm going to heat set these with this heat gun. Now again, like I said, oh, and it heats up, just FYI, it heats up immediately. You don't have to wait for it. It's a, it's blowing out hot heat right now. This will be super hot right here where the metal is. I will not touch that. Um, and again, the reason that I am curing this metal with the heat gun as opposed to the oven, um, which you can do, you can put different things in the oven, but I'm not sure what um, they've set the paint with. And so I don't want to put something that I'm unsure of into my oven where I cook my food, just in case. And then again, it's also to show you another easy way that you can set our heat, our um, Chalkology ink with heat. So there's different ways you can do it. Like there's the iron for the shirts instead of a t-shirt press. There's the oven and then today I'm using the heat gun. So it's pretty simple. I'm just concentrating the heat directly on the sign, on the words. That metal gets super hot. The bottom is actually okay still, but the top is super hot. That's still really, really hot too, after just going back to it. The bottom seems to be um, a lot cooler. I'm able to touch the bottom still, but it's quite hot all the way through. Probably wouldn't have hurt to have grabbed some oven mitts or <laughs> some hot plates before I did this, but I didn't, so. So that was the heat gun. I'm going to unplug that now. So I mean, it's so, it's really, really easy to use the heat gun. And I think, I'm not 100% sure how much I paid for this heat gun. It was a few years ago. Um, I think it was something like $30. Um, this is Black & Decker. I mean, you could probably get I'm sure there's a cheaper version out there anyhow, but I mean, this is a good product. 
Never had a problem with Black and Decker. So the metal is still hot, but the plastic around it is not. I'm just gonna move that over here. All right, so still hot. But now it's not sticky anymore, and that's actually how you can tell if it's set. When it's, um, when the ink is dry, and like with a lot of things, you can wait the 24 hours for, like you, I, on my mugs, I waited 24 hours before I put them in the oven. And after that 24 hours, you can't move it, but you can feel a sticky residue on it still before you do the heat cure. I'm not feeling the sticky residue. So I'm gonna actually throw these through my dishwasher because that's my that's my test that I like to do to make sure that it has cured um, properly because it should go through the dishwasher if it's been cured properly. Same with the clothes. If they've been cured properly, you should be able to put them through the washing machine with no issues. That feels good. That feels good. Great, so now I'm, I've got this new, this new look to my utensil holders that I have in my kitchen. Hello, welcome gather. Instead of just utensil. Oh. Look at that. Let me get that off there. Oh, good thing I didn't cure the side. Of course I touched it. <laughs> So uh, instead of just having utensils all over this container, it now says, hello, welcome, gather. So that's just a nice, cute way to update my, oh, I dropped my chocolate logo. It's a nice way to update my kitchen uh, without, without doing anything too extravagant, just a couple letters or a couple words that go nicely together. So I'm quite happy with that. I'm gonna definitely, I've been uh, playing around with the idea of doing this for a few days. So I've only got one container and everything's kind of shoved into it. And it's hard to cook when you can't, for me, it's hard to cook when I'm not organized. My kitchen needs to be organized for me to function well. Everything needs to be organized for me to function well. So um, those look to me like they're permanent. I'm going to get them to the dishwasher. I'm gonna get my utensils back in them and look at them every day and be happy. I really like these. And um, I was actually thinking about doing something to use up the rest of this ink that I can't put back in before I take off on you guys here. Um, like, what do I want to permanent? Not sure what I have around that that would be enough for. So I do have a little pillow, or not a little, but like a fairly large pillowcase that I was thinking about doing. But that's not really enough for that. I could add something onto underneath it, but I really don't want to do that. I kind of like just the the simple. The simple hello welcome gather exactly as it is. I thought I had something else kicking around here. Well, you know what? I'm gonna do this other one here because I can still use this once I've cured it. So see I've got there's a set of about six of these. I think that these are actually designed to um, put shish kebabs in, serve them to your guests. But uh, I use plates usually <laughs> for my hands. So maybe I'll do one on here so you can see. Grab another transfer. Actually, 
actually. Maybe I will just put the logo down. I haven't used a lot of the flange here. I haven't used a lot of the business builder designs that they sent when I first signed up as a designer. And I could put the little Chalk Assure logo in there. I think I'm gonna do. I don't know if that would work. No, see if because it's bending, that wouldn't work. I thought there was. That might be too big too. Let me try that one. Let's see how that one goes. Hope you don't mind while I play. I need to fluff that a little bit. Or fuzz that a little bit. And when I say fuzz, all I mean is um move that up a bit so you can see. I don't make a point of showing you very often because I'm using a lot of older transfers that don't need to be fuzzed. So fuzzing, you're sticking it down on a towel and that pulls up some of the lint from the towel. And that just helps um, soften the adhesion so that when you're pulling it up it's not stretching but when you're putting this in water it's just lint right so this will come off the back of your transfer when it's washed just helps it so there's not so much stretching you don't want stretching you want to keep it I want it to lay flat all the time. So let me see if I can get this to go straight down and also is that, is that straight? So I guess I can use this gray and then I'll have one of my business builder designs on my plate that I'm using. Because as I say, once this is cured, it's permanent. So I could mix my pastes right over top of this once it's cured and use it the same way. So yeah, that's working. All right. And there we go. So I'm just gonna grab up that ink and get placing it down. Yeah, I still have more than I need, but at least that's a lot less waste. You want the color to be pretty uniform across. If you see streaks on your above, up here, you'll see those streaks on your on your uh, finished product as well. So always try to get the ink and the paste, same either or, off evenly. Okay, and I'm gonna pull that. Ooh, hoo, hoo. How pretty is that? I know it like in the look of that gray that I created today. My ink, my uh, black velvet and my bright white. I'm just putting that in my bath of water here so that when I go to clean them and put them back on their backings, they'll be ready. And I'm just wiping my hands off on my apron here use this towel instead that'd probably be better all right so that's cute this I'm just gonna wash off I don't think that that's enough ink for you know what let's challenge myself I've got a few more just give me a second here
And I'm back. So I'm not sure, maybe I have five of them in total. That seems like a weird number. They're slightly imperfect. They were, these were originally from Liquidation World. If anybody remembers Liquidation World, I loved Liquidation World. So I wonder if I can get this one actually on it then. Because once it comes off the cardboard or the, the backing, it's a little bit different in terms of how much it'll bend. I've never used this one either. So again, this is a business builder um, pack that asked me how I make money beautifully. These are Chocature business builder packages. And I'm just gonna fuzz this. If you can see this towel on my lap here, you can see how, <laughs> how much that red pigment stays. And that is the paste, that's not the ink at all. Mind you, I haven't washed this yet. This is just what I use to dry off my transfers. I just folded it onto itself. And I actually like the other saying a bit better. I wonder if I could find that one here. I like to think I'm organized until I go to find things. Let me see if that's... If I don't have enough, I'll just wipe it off and there won't be anything on this, but... I'm just trying to see if I can get this all the way across. So that looks pretty centered. And you can see, like I was saying to you, um, see how it's folding up here at the edges because of the roundness so now like that this is going to work okay for this because the part that I'm doing is laying flat but if it was like that on like say um, I don't know what the name is I'm looking for here but like um a much more angled like uh cup or vase or something like that then it wouldn't work because there would be too much um, openness underneath so it would be bleeding right directly through your silk screen works beautifully as long as you can keep this flat so I'm not even sure if I've got enough ink here for this but I will give it a try see how far I get it and if I don't then I will erase it but You'd rather use it and throw it in the garbage. I think I do have enough. So it's way more than I needed, but sometimes those things just work out for the best anyhow. I'm going to pull this one off. Again, this isn't one I've used before. And this is a uh, business building um, transfer. It's got a little bit on the side there that I don't want. All right. Well, those work really well. 
So I'm going to move this out of the way again. And actually, I think I'm going to put this in its water bath now because I'm pretty sure. I, I don't think I can get anything else out of that. I think I've done as much as I can with that one. Oh, they look so cute. I love the way this stuff turns out. So I'm going to just move a few more things and pull this heat gun back out again. I'm just going to... plug it back in. When it comes to these um, tools and industrial type anything with electricity, I make sure that's always unplugged. And actually, you know what, because of how hot that got, I am going to put a towel, put a towel under it. I probably should just put a, a piece of wood under it, but I'm going to, I'm not going to concentrate the heat to the towel. I'm just concentrating it here. So this is just going to act as a barrier. It's actually not quite as warm as the metal got because this is ceramic, but uh, the ceramic I could put in the oven, I'm sure of that. But it's just, I, I really find that it's nice to be able to show you live. That way you can see exactly how quickly you can do some of this stuff. In the oven, I would heat set this. I would put it into a cold oven, then I would heat it up to um, 325. And like people are saying different times, but I've had success with doing 325, which is uh, 25 degrees lower than a lot of people are doing. So a lot of people are doing 350. I like the 325 and I'm doing 325 for 40 minutes. And a lot of people are doing 350 for 30 minutes. So I feel like the lower and slower heat has worked really well for me. And, um, I mean, everybody can try whatever they'd like to try and see what works for them, but what's worked for me is the 40 full minutes. And so you put it into a cold oven, then you set your oven. When it gets up to the correct temperature, that's when you start timing. So once it reaches the 325, that's when I time for 40 minutes. At that 40 minutes, then I shut off my oven and I leave it in there until it's cold. And that's how I've been doing my heat setting. So actually this is much, much quicker. <laughs> quite clearly. And I've never tried doing the heat gun to set before. So to test, um, I will be putting this through the dishwasher to make sure that this works.
quite warm. Oh, it's really warm. I'm just going to unplug that now. Gun up here. Okay. So, what I came to do was the hello welcome gather on the back of these utensil containers here that I have. See, it says utensils. This was already on here. And then I have put the hello on here. I'm not feeling this stickiness at all. So, I believe that that actually does signal to me that it's been cured fully but again like I said I will put them through the dishwasher and just make sure that this is permanent that does feel like it's gonna stay though and these are still really quite really warm so like with the metal I wouldn't put them in the oven simply because I'm not sure what they coated the metal with it might not be food safe um, to be putting in my oven where I cook my food. Ceramic, I know for a fact I can put in the oven. But um, I did want to, first of all, I did want to try the heat gun method myself. That way I know for a fact what works and what doesn't. Um, and I will put all of them through the dishwasher and we'll see uh, for sure if they are cured. So I got to use up the rest of my ink. I didn't have to discard anything. Ask me how Make Money Beautifully. These are Chocature uh, Business Builder logos, these two here. And then the Hello Welcome Gather I've had for a while and I haven't found a surface to use it on until I just thought of that today because all three of these say just utensils on them and um, like, I mean, it's fine, but it's fun to put something different on something you love. And I do love these containers that hold my all my wooden spoons, my spatulas, all that kind of stuff that I'm constantly using. So I will get those washed and I will make sure that I give you guys pictures after they've been washed to show that they have been successfully, fully permanently cured. So um, I really appreciate anybody who has watched today. Um, please like my page, follow me, um, comment on my posts. It really helps me attract more views. Um, visit me at my YouTube page that I've posted to Facebook as well. Um, Craft Hands 2020 is my, uh, my, my name for pretty much everything I've done, Instagram, Facebook. I've got a YouTube channel. I have I can't do a custom name for that until I've got like a thousand subscribers or something astronomical like that. So I'm not quite there yet, but um, I've posted that to my Facebook. And my website for Chocachor, if you'd like to purchase as a customer or um, become a designer is www.chocachor.com forward slash craft hands 2020, all one words, or all one word. And, um, Actually, this month we have a really, really good, uh, just for the month of March, we have a really great um, offer for customers where you get, if you buy four transfers, that 
fourth transfer is free and you can stack it as well so if you buy 12 transfers three of those transfers will be free this month just for the month of march so that's a big deal and it's on the least expensive as most companies are it's the least expensive one that you get free so if you order all the same size you'll still get um, a great discount um, and they've also um, come out with shipping prices that are much lower. I've posted this all to my website. I don't want to go all businessy on you. <laughs> That's no fun to listen to, but please check out my page. Just see all the different things we've got. Um, I really appreciate your views. I appreciate everybody. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great day and happy chalking.